What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie, where we make it our mission to dive deep into Linux and to help you get started in the tech field. Now, if you're into gaming and you care about your privacy, which let's be real, you should be, this video is gonna be right up your alley. We're diving into some hot news that could seriously shake up the Linux gaming scene. And more importantly, the way we think about privacy in gaming. Now, you might have heard about Microsoft taking steps to rethink their whole kernel level anti-cheat strategy. Yeah, it sounds super technical, but don't worry about it, I got you. We're gonna break this down, see how it affects us Linux users, and figure out if this is something we should be hyped about, or if this is just another corporate move that doesn't really benefit us. So buckle up and let's get into it. All right, so let's start off with some background. So kernel level anti-cheat software, what even is it? Well, imagine your computer is a big old house, right? Now the kernel is like the master key to this house. It's the only thing that controls who gets in or out of every room. And it has access to literally everything in the house, your files, your hardware, your memory. Yeah, all of it. So when a game installs kernel level anti-cheat software, it's like giving the game the master key to your house. It gets to walk around, check every room, and make sure you're not hiding anything shady like cheats or hacks. And while that might sound fine, if you're just trying to keep things fair in a game of Call of Duty, it comes with some pretty serious privacy concerns. Now, the gaming industry has been leaning heavily into this kernel level stuff for a while now. Big names like Valve, EA, and Epic Games have their own version of kernel mode anti-cheat systems. And while this has been effective in catching cheaters, it also opens up a huge can of worms in terms of security and privacy. And this level of access can be exploited if not handled correctly. And we've already seen some incidents that prove how dangerous this can be. I don't know if you guys remember this, but I did a video on the CrowdStrike incident. Yeah, one little slip up of kernel level code and boom. <laughs> The whole world is in chaos. Planes were grounded, businesses took a hit, and people were scratching their heads, wondering what just happened. So Microsoft took note of this fiasco, and now they're talking about pulling back on kernel level access. They're aiming to move a lot of these security features out of the kernel, which could make systems more secure and interestingly enough, could have some really positive implications for Linux gaming. This move could make it easier for games that rely on these anti-cheat systems to be compatible with Linux. But as always, the devil is in the details. So let's talk about how this move could impact us Linux users specifically. If Microsoft follows through with this plan, it could mean that the games using these anti-cheat systems might finally play nice with Linux. But right now, many games that have kernel level anti-cheat systems are a nightmare to run on Linux. And that's because Wine or Proton, which we use to run Windows games on Linux, can't really emulate that level of system access. It's like trying to sneak into the VIP lounge with a fake pass. The bouncer is going to catch you. Now, by moving these anti-cheat measures out of the kernel, they become less intrusive, which would make it a lot easier for Wine and Proton to handle them. In theory, this could open up a whole new world of games for Linux users. I mean, imagine being able to run your favorite AAA title on Linux without having to jump through a thousand hoops. Sounds like a dream, right? But let's not get too carried away just yet. Because the thing is, even if Microsoft does make this change, game developers still have the final say. There's this lingering perception of Linux as the hacker's OS. I mean, we've all heard it before. Oh, you use Linux? You must be some kind of hacker. It's a stereotype that's been around forever, and unfortunately, game companies have bought into it. They worry that Linux's open nature makes it easier to cheat, and they use this as an excuse to avoid Linux compatibility. So even with these changes, we might not see an overnight shift in how many games support Linux. But hey, we can hope, right? Now, there's also the question of how anti-cheat vendors might respond. If they're used to having all this access and control, they might not be too thrilled about losing it. They could try and find other ways to lock out Linux users. 
So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. But in a best case scenario, these changes could be the nudge we need to get more game devs to take Linux seriously as a gaming platform. All right, so here's where I get to rant a bit. Honestly, I'm glad Microsoft is taking a step back and re-evaluating this whole kernel level thing. For too long, we've been dealing with this overreach where games are demanding way more access to our system than they should. I mean, why does a game need to know what's going on at the deepest level of my system just to make sure I'm not using a name by it? It's like inviting your nosy neighbor to check if you're hiding snacks in your house and then letting them rummage through your personal files while they're at it. Not cool. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for fair play. No one likes cheaters, especially in online games. Trust me, every time I see one or a potential one, I just back out of the game and call it duty. But there's got to be a better way to handle this than giving games free reign over our systems. I mean, the CrowdStrike incident was a huge wake up call. It showed just how dangerous it is to have too much code running in the kernel. One little mistake and it's chaos. So moving away from this model is a good move in my opinion. It's about finding that balance between security and privacy though. But here's the kicker, even if Microsoft makes this change, we're still at the mercy of game developers. Are they going to be brave enough to jump on board and make their games more Linux friendlier? Or are they going to cling to the same old excuses and keep us on the sideline? That's the million dollar question for me. The optimist in me wants to say this could be a turning point. If we could prove that anti-cheat systems don't need kernel level access to be effective, maybe we can start to break down some of these barriers. Maybe we'll see more games making their way to Linux, and maybe we'll finally get the recognition we deserve as a viable gaming platform. But I've been in this game long enough and know that nothing is guaranteed. We've been burned before, so while this is a step in the right direction, we've got to stay vigilant and keep pushing for a change. All right, guys, so that's my take on this whole kernel level anti-cheat debate and what it means for Linux gaming and our privacy. It's a complex issue, but it's one that's really important to talk about. We're at a bit of a crossroads here, and the decisions made in the next few years could shape the future of gaming on Linux. So if you're as passionate about this as I am, keep the conversation going. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And remember, if you're new here, welcome to Keep It Techie, where I do my best to break down Linux and tech in a way that's easy to understand and fun. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future content. We've got a lot more to cover in the world of Linux, and I can't wait to dive into it with you. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. And of course, keep it techie. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.